Okay, where's Andrew Guerra? Andrew, you're up. All right, we're going to regroup here. We're going to regroup. So, Andrew, what distance did you Usain travel and what distance did Emma travel? They both travel 100 meters. What happened? There's All right, so you're doing good, so I'll ask you the next one too, Andrew. How many seconds did it take you saying to cover that distance? I put it on here earlier in the setup. Okay, there you go. 9.58. And what about Emma? Same. So they both covered the same distance in the same time. Agree? Okay, so then what's different? Crystally. Where's Crystally? How about Adam Nichols? Where's Adam? Yes, sir. So what's different if they both cover the same distance at the same time? What's different about their races? Okay. Who, so who is who? Who, which one's which? Okay, so the eraser accelerates... And then um, throughout the race, so and Emma travels at a constant speed throughout the race, right? Okay, so what's the purpose of showing Emma? Really, our focus is on Usain, right? Because this is the race that we're, all, we're talking about, his world record race. So our, our focus is on Usain, but then what's the purpose of showing Emma then? Um, so it's showing his acceleration. Emma shows us what is that? Shows that the fact that he's in his at a constant uh, speed, he's actually accelerating. Okay. So oh, so okay, so it's showing that he's not traveling at a constant speed. Right. Okay. But uh, there's more to it. There's more to it. So tell me, tell me more. Okay. So what does that have to do with Emma? the purpose of Emma? What's that? Okay, so he's saying Emma is a representation of average speed. Emma represents? The average speed of? Same, same both. So when we talk, when we get this, and how do we calculate, what is the average, how do we calculate the average speed? Where is uh, Edward Morris? Where's Edward? How do we calculate the average speed? Careful. So we want to be very precise here. What? Change in distance over change in time, which is 100 over 9.58, which is 9 meters per second. So when we found 
uh, Usain's average speed, we got this number, 10.44 meters per second. But as was rightly pointed out, he's accelerating the whole way, which means his, what about his speed? Constantly, it's always changing, right? It's always changing. Yet when we find his, we find his speed, we get one value. So we're really trying to understand what that value means. So what is the meaning of this average speed? If his speed is changing the whole time, what's the meaning of this number, 10.44 meters per second, if he never really spent any time running this 10.44 meters per second because he's accelerated most of the way? So what's the meaning of that number of his average speed? Daniel Wallace. What do you think? What's the meaning of that value? It's the highest and it's lowest. Add it together and divide it by two. What do you think? Right. Add all the speeds together and divide by the number of speeds. What do you think? Can't do it. How many speeds did he run? Infinite number. You can't do that. So it's, it's not an arithmetic mean, like the way you find a test average. It's different. It's different. So what is this number, 10.44 meters per second? What is it? What is the meaning of that? Is that a hand or just an air scratch? Go for it. Okay. It's an, so you said it was amount of time. Is it an amount of time? Okay, this is so this is why we're taking time to do it. Yeah, tell me. Okay, so it's you're saying it's a constant speed. What constant speed is it? Somebody knew. Yeah. It's a constant speed required to travel Right, it's the constant speed to cover the same amount of distance as you're saying in the same amount of time. That one case, and so why is Emma up there? She's showing that constant speed. They start together, and she goes at a constant speed, and then they end together. So she, like we said up here, she represents Usain Bolt's average speed because average speed is a constant speed to run the same distance at the same time. Okay, average speed is the constant speed. His speed is changing continuously, so we can't do this arithmetic mean kind of thing. We can't do an arithmetic mean where we add up a bunch of speeds and divide by the number of speeds. So it's like a different runner. That number represents like a different runner. Or if he had run the same race at a constant speed, this is the constant speed you would have need to run to achieve the same end time, same distance in the same time. Okay, so let's practice. We just got we got to practice thinking about this idea. So again, this is important. Emma represents the average speed of Usain Bolt because she's running at a constant speed of 10.44 meters per second. And so she covers the same distance in the same amount of time. Any questions? All right, so let's practice this. So here's an animation. What does it have to do with what we're talking about? I'll play it over and over again, okay? So we got John and Jane, and they're both walking, okay? And you got a time clock and each of their distances at, at different points. At, as the time changes, the distance changes, right? Okay, so have a conversation with the person next to you. There's lots to talk about here. So what is being shown here in the context of average speed? Go, we talk about it.
Hey, one more time and then we'll talk. Last time. Here we go. Okay, where's Alex Dornfest? Where's Alex? Okay, sir, you're up. So, what? Tell me some element of this that's worth talking about in the context of average speed. So. Okay. So are you saying that John is showing Jane's average speed? Is that what you're saying? You guys agree with that? John is showing Jane's average speed. Yeah. Well said. Okay. So there's a good first statement. So can we be more specific? So why is John showing Jane's average speed? So it's more detail here. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So delta D is five yards, and delta T is twelve seconds. Anyone? Did anyone find the average speed? What'd you get? Four two. So. Again, our average speed is the change in distance over the change in time. 0 0.42. Okay. Anything more to say? Any more comments on that? So why, how or why is John showing the average speed of Jane? Angelica? And how is Jane walking? She's at multiple speeds, right? She's at multiple speeds, but he's covering the same distance in the same amount of time at a constant rate of 0.42 yards per second. So who is the focal person here? Jane, right? Jane is the person who were, you know, when things move in real life, do they normally move at a constant speed or changing speeds? Yeah, most things in life, you know, as they move, their speed changes. And so the way that we have a quick way to calculate some kind of speed is a constant speed. So we really, we got to understand that because that's two different things, right? If most things, if something's moving at a changing speed and we calculate a speed, we got to realize that we just put a constant speed onto something that's moving with a changing speed. So we have to have a good understanding of what that number means, okay? So it's the constant speed to move the same amount of distance in the same amount of time. So your speedometer in your car, how does it measure speed? So you're going down the highway, right? And so you all have this, it's like you get this certain feeling of things going by being 62 miles per hour, right? How is it, how is it knowing that it's 62 miles per hour? What's that? Okay, it goes off rotations, but, okay. So it's using the tire rotations? So does it know at that instant in time that it's 62 miles per hour? What does it do? Right? So the ro uses the rotations of the tire, they're both saying rotations of the tire, to find what? To find how does it do that? Okay, so it's using rotations of the car to determine what?
No, a change in distance. A change in distance. Choosing your a big change in distance or a small change in distance? Very small. It's it's able to to just in in over a short period of time get a short a small change in distance. And that's and so what is that short period of time? Change in time. You see? So your even your speedometer, you think of it as this is the speed I'm traveling this moment. But what is it calculating? It's showing you really what? If it's showing you this, what is it showing you? An average speed. Right? It's it's just taking a very for a very small period of time using the tire rotations to find a very the, the, the corresponding change in distance. And it's calculating an average speed and it's it's throwing that up on the, the speedometer. So this, the, the concept of an instantaneous speed or the speed that I'm traveling this moment is kind of, it's kind of an oxymoron. You need a change in time and a change in distance and be able to calculate speed. So really all speeds are about calculating an average speed. Right? Because it, it requires change. It requires a change in time and the corresponding change in distance. Does that make sense? Ever thought about that before? Oh, like when you put the big, like, like oh, I, yeah, I, mean, yeah, that's, you know, yeah I, did, I did that last week, I put the big giant tr wheels on my truck. No, I didn't. Okay, so, um, I was just wondering why the speedometer wasn't reading right. Just kidding. There are also some speedometers that work, that are close to the transmission. Something else besides the wheel. Okay, so yeah, so there's other ways to measure the distance besides the wheel, so that when you put the big wheels on, you're still okay. All right, other questions? All right, so let's take a different view of this. Oh, so while I'm thinking of it, so did we did we get a note taker yet? Do you have a volunteer for a note taker? A note taker? Did we get it yet? I didn't read your email. You did have volunteers? Okay, so which recitation is it? Wednesday? So the Wednesday recitation needs a note taker. And that means you're taking notes in lecture four times a week, lecture and recitation. And you have to have good handwriting and be complete with the notes. And if you do that all semester, um, you get 100 bucks. So it's a $100 job. So if you're interested in that, talk to Roy. So we need, we need a note taker for someone for Wednesday recitation. OK? Um, other announcements? Uh, web work is up for Monday. It's on this average speed stuff. Um, and you've got written homework for next week. That's been up for a couple days now. You're going to hand that in during recitation. Okay, and then our first exam is a week from Thursday, or two weeks from yesterday. So we're going to start, next week we're going to start Module 3, and the exam will be on Module 2 and Module 3. Okay, and that'll be a week from Thursday. And you'll take that just like you took the pretest. You go to that the testing center on Thursday on your own time, and uh, same, same procedure. Bring a sun card, and you can work, you have as much time as you want to work on it. Any questions on that kind of stuff? Yes, sir. Um, no, they haven't. They're, they're doing. They did all, every all eight hundred people in pre-calc at once, so it takes time. So we have not got those back yet. Other questions? Okay, so let's take a different look at. In your homework on average rate of change, they'll come at this in all different ways. But this is the main idea. So it's always going to be applying this idea, but the questions can be asked in different ways. So here's here's an example of that. On page, I think it's 44 in your book. Check out page 44. You get this question right here. Yes, 44. All right, so uh, they defined some variables here and gave you a formula. They said the distance in feet of a car from the intersection after t seconds is given by the formula here. So what do you think about the definition of those two variables? Yeah, 44, page 44. So the distance d in feet of a car from the intersection after t seconds given by this formula. What's your reaction to those 
the definition of those two variables? What do you think? Let's see. How about where is Taylor? Tackford. Uh, oh, that's you. <laughs> Great. Uh, why, like, the average time or the time? So, you want to change what it is? Uh, no. So, it's, it's defining these two. I'm, I'm asking how it, if they're defined well or not, is what I'm asking. Do you think those are two well defined variables or not? Yes? Dustin Lacey. Where's Dustin? You agree? Where's Dustin? Yeah. You like both those? I have a little issue with one of them. Or none of them. Why? So he's saying it's time. The T variable. What's that? Okay. Right, and that's like what you were saying also. Yeah, it, it's really not specific enough this time. What time? Okay, so I'm going to say T seconds. After and we can so so we just need to specify so after um, starting a stopwatch okay so say we're watching this car go through the intersection and boom so at some point in time the car is somewhere around the intersection we're going to hit the clock and then this this formula is going to tell us the distance in feet of the car from the intersection t seconds after I start the clock. Okay, I first took the stopwatch. All right, so that's that's better. So make sure you define your variables very specifically. Okay, so now I want you to find the average rate of change of the car for the time period from t equals three to t equals seven seconds. So here, this is different now. You're given a formula, and you've got this. You've got these two quantities. So t is going to change from three to seven. Find the average rate of change of the car. So work on it. Go. See what you come up with. Okay, I'm going to come around and see what you're doing. Show me what you're doing.
Okay, so you got some time to think about it. Some people made some progress. Let's let's kind of uh, approach this with the graph in front of us. So we'll do the calculations, but also looking at how the, the graph of the of the formula. Okay, so which quantity uh, is conventional, normal to put on the horizontal axis in this situation? Time. Okay, so we're gonna put the quantity one was our and what was that time again? No, no, just what is the quantity? So it's the time. Time since start. Starting the stopwatch. And we could have done something different, like passing a tree, like the time since it passed a tree or passed a rock or something. But the time since starting the stopwatch in seconds. Okay? And so. In this class, graphs are not just static things, like a wire or a, or a line, right, or a, or a curve. They're representing a dynamic situation, right? They represent how a quantity changes, right? So we start the watch, and what happens? The value of t does what? Yeah, it changes. It takes on all these values of time since we started the watch. And this is back from week, week one, right? Changing quantities. It takes on all these values. Okay, as time goes by. So therefore, on our on our uh, vertical axis, we've got what quantity? Distance in feet. How about that? Distance. So uh, distance in feet. What do you think? Distance from the intersection. Distance traveled since we started the stopwatch. Are those the same thing? Distance traveled and distance from the intersection. Are those the same thing? No, those are two different distances. Distance from the tree. Distance from home. Right? Remember we talked about this in the first week. There would be a dozen or even a hundred ways that we could measure a distance in this scenario. So we've got to be specific. Which distance is it? Distance in feet. Since distance traveled since starting the stopwatch, is that our quantity? No, it's not our quantity. That's a different quantity. What quantity is it? From the intersection. Yeah, it's not distance traveled. It's not distance traveled in the time, T. It's distance from the intersection because look what happens. What is, what is the distance, the D value, at T equals zero? Is it zero? the formula. What is the distance, what is the value of d when time equals zero? Three. So it can't be distance traveled, right? You can't go three feet before you even start. So that's why it's distance can be from the intersection. From the intersection. Okay. Cool. So we were after the, what was our starting time? Yeah, so again, so we're looking, we're, we're looking at these things as how the quantities change together. That's like the heartbeat of calculus, how quantities change together. So as time increases, what happens to our d quantity, d variable? It increases, meaning the car is doing what? It doesn't mean the car is accelerating? What does the fact that d increases mean for the car? It's getting further from the intersection. It's getting further from the intersection. As time goes by, it's getting further from the intersection. That's shown by the purple or the pink line, the pink dot. So the starting time we're interested in is? D equals 3. And how can we represent? So at this moment in time, three seconds after we start the clock, the car is some distance from the intersection. How do we represent it? How's that represented? That it, it's a point, right? It's a point right there. Okay, and then as time keeps going on, what happens? We get different points until we reach, in our situation, we reach seven seconds. And we have a different distance. At seven seconds, we get a different point. How do we show all those points? So, yeah, we can just sweep with our pencil or a pen. 
we can just sweep this thing, and we know that that represents all the individual points. That's what that is, that red curve. You have to see, have an image that that's all the individual points of a time since we started the stopwatch and an associated distance and feet from the intersection. Okay, so let's go back to our point three. Okay, so what is our so what is our change in time? Four seconds, right? So I got one point five t squared plus t plus three. Is that right? And we got a delta t of four. So how do we find the average speed for this change in time? Yeah. Okay. So he, you want to plug two different times into the distance formula. Different times. He wants to plug three in first and then seven. It sounds like a lot of work compared to just plugging four in there. Can't we just plug four in there? Let's take four, since it's our change in time, and put it in here, and it'll give us our change in distance. What do you think? Okay. Why? Because there's a big difference between the change in time and what is this formula accepting? Time. If we put, if you put four into this formula, what does the formula think the value four is? Does it think it's a change in time? It thinks it's what? At four seconds since we started the stopwatch. So let's do that. Put four into the equation. Actually, I can't get a four here, but I'll get as close as I can. There we go. Okay, so put a four in. What do you get? Thirty-one. The value of four. Is it a time since the stopwatch started, or is it a change in time? It's a value of t. And thirty-one. Is it a, is it a distance from the intersection, or is it a change in distance? distance, right? So if you plug 4 into this formula, that formula thinks it's a time since you hit the stopwatch. It's going to give you the distance from the intersection. It's not going to give you a change in distance. It's going to give you the distance from the intersection. Okay, so, inst so uh, instead we want to, when t equals 3, what do we get for distance from the intersection? Nice and loud. So, nice and loud, one person. 19.5, thank you. I have very good hearing, but not through a crowd. T equals 7, 83.5. Okay, average speed is calculated by equals change in distance over change in time. So the key to this problem is really distinguishing between d and t values and delta d and delta t values. So you've got four different quantities that you're dealing with, and they're all they're different quantities. Change in distance is different than just a d value. And a change in time is different than just a t value. You've got four different quantities to deal with. Okay? So we get, what is our change in distance? 64. And the change in time? Average speed. Is it feet? Okay, tell the person next to you, what does that number mean in this context? What does 16 feet per second in this context mean? Go. Thank you. 
Oh, sorry. That's not right. It should be here. All right, I want to represent all this stuff. So, so how about, uh, where's Karen Lopez? Karen, so tell me what that number means, 16 feet per second. Can you interpret it? So it's, she says, a const, is it a constant speed? Okay, how about, it's the constant speed of the car. Is it the constant speed of the car? The car is not moving at a constant speed. car is not moving at a constant speed. Tell me. It's the average speed of the previous second, right? Okay, which is what? What does that mean? Let's see, somebody new here. Tell me your name. Jonathan. So yeah, so it's like if, if it took a different trip, if it if it went a constant speed of 16 feet per second, what he said, then it would it would make the same trip. It would have the same uh, it would cover the same distance in the same amount of time. So I'm going to show all this on the graph. Where's Morgan? How can I show the change in time on the graph? Starting where? Starting at the point. Yep. And go which way? And then this represents? Good. Which is what? Four. And then how can I show the corresponding, what corresponding change in distance do we find? Where's Omar? So how can I show the corresponding change in time, distance? Say, say it again. 64. And how do I show that on the graph? Uh, you can go up. From here? Yeah. Maybe. Oh. Push the button. Let's see. Back? Are we back? We're back. Don't push the button on the pen. All right. There you go. And what does this represent, that line? Change in. And it equals? Okay. So if this is a constant rate of change, how how is a constant rate of change? What is the graph of a constant rate of change? So we've been talking about the last couple of days. What's the graph of constant rate of change? Uh, Eric, where's Eric Valencia? Where's Eric? Maybe he dropped. Leah, where's Leah? How do we show constant rate of change and how does it show up on a graph? Constant rate of change. A line from the first point to the ending point. What do you think? Straight line. Do a clue. All right, this one's more tough. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, not great. Pretend it's a line. Not too bad. Pretend it's a line, right? So, is the 16 feet per second the actual track that the car made? No, right? It's the it's the equivalent constant speed to go the same distance in the same time. So that line represents the average speed because average speed is constant speed. And constant rate of change graphs is a line.
Okay, so now I want you to find the average speed from zero to four. Zero to four seconds. Go, quick. Find the average speed from zero to four seconds. So this, uh, here, I'm, what I meant to write here is represents the average speed. Okay, don't leave yet. So, the last one was from three to seven, but because this one's from zero to four, I can just, this time I can just put the four into the distance formula, right? It'll work, right? Still doesn't work, still doesn't work. What is the distance from the, from the intersection at time equals zero? Three, what about at four? Change in distance. 28, same change in time. What's the what's this average speed? So hold on, I got one more thing. So we had a change in time of four. What was the resulting change in distance here? Zero to four. 28, right? And then we had another change in time of four. The change in distance was 64. Remember what we said about constant rate of change. Equal changes in input result, or equal changes in the one quantity result in equal changes of the other. So I got equal changes of time, four seconds. What about my changes in distance? First I got 28, then I got 64. So what's the conclusion about the rate of change of the car? It's not constant because we didn't get a consistent change in distance for the equal change in time. And that's why the graph is what? Curved, not straight. Okay, have a great weekend.
Last name? Uh, Al Geneva, A L J. Last name starts with an A? Yeah. Yeah, 